Good morning, and welcome to this hour of worship of the living God on this Baptism of the Lord Sunday. Let us now enter the house of the Lord with music, and let us worship God. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of the Psalms, reading in Psalm 29, verses 3 and 4. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over the mighty waters, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Let us pray together. Glory to you, O God. Your voice is over the waters, full of power and majesty. Your word shakes the wilderness and blesses us with peace. We give you thanks and praise for the new thing you have done in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Baptized by John in the Jordan, you anointed him with your Holy Spirit and claimed him as your beloved son. 
We give you thanks and praise that by the grace of our baptism, you have claimed us as well and poured out the gifts of your spirit so that we might be dead to sin and alive to you in Christ Jesus. Continue to pour out your spirit upon us, empower us to love and serve you and to live as your faithful people bearing witness to the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our Gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel according to Mark, reading from chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. As we prepare to hear these words of scripture, let us pray. Holy One, open us in heart, mind, and spirit to your word this morning. Let us hear the affirmation of your steadfast love for us, secured in baptism. Let us experience ourselves as sealed, that is assured of your promises of freedom from sin and evil and all powers that would ever separate us from you and your steadfast love and the strength of your Holy Spirit through whom we are equipped to live lives of healing, of reconciliation, of love for all people as you have loved us. In the name of Jesus, amen. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday. It's a day when we celebrate the gift of baptism administered to our Lord Jesus Christ and to all of us for the forgiveness of sins. What this means is for the cancellation of any power that separates us from the love of God and any power that undercuts, damages, and destroys our loving relationships with one another. This is a day when we celebrate a God who is both almighty and all loving a God who is very present in the midst of life and in the midst of our world, a God whose design in creating the universe, the stars and the heavens, the planets, the creatures, and us, whose design was that all things should live together in harmony and in steadfast love. This is a God who, knowing that we 
fall far short of this divine intention, has chosen not to destroy us or to hold us in eternal punishment, but to forgive us out of a depth of compassion that understands through entering this world as Jesus, the man from Nazareth in Galilee, who understands our inability to love as God loves us, and who, understanding this, loves us and forgives us, and invites us to receive and believe in God's power to set aside the powers that divide us from God and see in us the beloved children whom God created, with whom God is well pleased, and who by God's will will one day be free from any power of division and destruction and will live only in the power of love. These are the things we celebrate this baptism of the Lord's Sunday. I also want to highlight this day and what the Bible teaches us about it, its theological importance. Because this past week in our country, people violently assaulted our democratic institutions. People who believe in lies. And it's important to me to emphasize that some of these people, by their words and by placards they carried, understood themselves to be doing these things in the name of Jesus. arrogated to themselves a power of judgment by which they see themselves as righteous and literally and by name condemned other Christians and others in our government as instruments of Satan or Satan himself. This is heresy on top of whatever legal and constitutional laws and dictums would name it as insurrection or sedition, we Christians need to recognize heresy and call it out when we see it. And so I pray especially that this baptism of the Lord's Sunday will be a time to affirm that the God who has claimed us and has placed a seal upon us and has made promises on our behalf is the God of love, is the God whose supreme commandment to us is to love neighbor as self, is the God whose blessed Son, Jesus, told us, judge not, lest ye be judged. This is a time for us Christians to claim these promises, also as our charter, to return hatred with love, to resist evil and not return evil for evil, to forgive as we have been forgiven, not in a weak or resigned way, but through the full power of forgiveness that is stronger than hatred, stronger than death, offered even to those who would condemn us. In the name of Jesus, for the sake of reconciliation. And so this morning, I want to give you a gift. It's been a hard week. Many of us are exhausted. Many of us are hurting. Let this moment be a time truly of rest, of Sabbath, of sanctuary and healing. I'm going to borrow from an ancient Christian spiritual direction uh, or tradition, a series of directives given by St. Ignatius that are used in 
retreats and in other settings for Christians to pause and reflect and claim their childhood in Christ. One of the 30 directives is called Remembering Our Baptism. And what I'd like to do this morning is reread the gospel. I'll reread it in two portions. And after the first portion, I will pause and give you some questions for you to consider. And then we'll have a musical interlude where you can continue to reflect and to take note of what you hear and experience. And then I'll read the second portion. And you can Again, hear several questions, and we'll have a musical interlude to reflect. And then I'll offer some closing guidance. So what I would ask you to do right now is to make yourself comfortable. Have at hand something to make notes with, pen and paper, or your phone or laptop, some device where you can take notes as you reflect. Let's begin. I'll read the first part of our reading. As you listen, what I would ask is that you seek to place yourself in this scene. Imagine yourself standing among the crowds gathered from Judea and Jerusalem, standing there at the banks of the Jordan River, watching John out in the distance in front of you in line, waist deep in the water, baptizing people. See if you can open your senses to what you see and hear and smell and feel all around you as this scene is depicted in the gospel. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Take a few moments now. Reflect on this scene as if you were in it.
Now I will read the second half of our reading this morning. And this time, imagine that you are Jesus, come to the Jordan, waiting in line with all of the others to receive baptism. And again, open all your senses to the experience of baptism. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son the Beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Take a few moments now to reflect on what you've seen and heard and experienced in the baptism of Jesus. Even if you are not yet baptized, I invite you to join in this closing time now as we celebrate the rite of the renewal of baptism. In baptism, we pause as the church to celebrate what God has already done in Jesus. We celebrate outwardly with water and with this reaffirmation. 
the full truth of who we are before God, beloved children. This is not simply a charming ritual, a sweet photographic moment in church one Sunday. In these days when truth has been so sorely challenged and assaulted, what we are about to do is bedrock truth. As God's beloved child with whom God is well pleased, you and I are now free to acknowledge the wholeness of our lives. The places where we are broken, the sins we commit, our failure in thought, word, and deed to love our neighbor as ourself. We're free to acknowledge these things not as an act of shame or shaming, but in the spirit of Jesus who himself said, and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. We are free to tell the truth of our brokenness and God's forgiveness, our mortality and God's eternity, our struggling feebly and God's claiming victory for us, our fears and worries and God's peace and justice. So let us together reaffirm the baptismal covenant. The Lord be with you. Hear these words from Holy Scripture. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of the one Spirit. Beloved people of God, our baptism is the sign and seal, that is, promise, of our cleansing from sin and of our being grafted into Christ. Through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Christ, the power of sin was broken, and God's realm entered our world. Through our baptism, we were made citizens of the kingdom of God, God's realm of love freed from the bondage of sin. So let us celebrate that freedom and this redemption through the renewal of the promise made at our baptism. I ask you, therefore, this morning, once again to reject sin and all powers that defy God's love, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we were baptized, and I want you again to remember that line of people waiting at the Jordan with great hope of being freed, of having their lives renewed and restored. Imagine yourself in that line because we are in that long, centuries-long line of men and women, infants and children brought to the water. So, taking your place in line, Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil in, and its power in the world? If so, answer, I do. Do you accept Jesus Christ as sovereign over your life in love and as your savior from sin and death? If so, answer, I do. And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, please answer, I will with God's help.
And now, remember your baptism and be thankful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen.